This is the Reflection of Perfection, the number one selection, TRP. Damn, I look good. Welcome back to Fight Night as we continue our salute to the 2004 United States Men's Boxing Olympic Team. Next up is the team middleweight, Andre, the resurrected Durrell. Durrell had all the momentum going into the Olympics as he dispatched mean Joe Green, no, not the famous football player, in the Olympic trials, then defeating Clarence Joseph in the box off. Durrell then won the qualifying tournament, his bout in the U.S. versus Puerto Rico doom leap, the Olympic Test Games, and the Titan Games. His last amateur loss was the finals of the 2003 Pan Am Games against Jordanis Tapang, who he beat in the Olympic Test. In Athens, he wiped out Dabatia Ha in the first round before defeating Nabil Cassell in the second round, becoming the first Olympian to reach the quarterfinals to that point. There, he defeated Jordanis Tapang to avenge his Pan Am Games loss from the year before earlier. Unfortunately, he ran smack into none other than Triple G in the semifinals, and Golovkin beat him soundly. Darrell took home the bronze medal, but even though you know losing to Triple G was no shame. His pro career was much like Nightmare Martyr Ocean's. Could win the junior titles, but failed to win the big one. Still, on the undercard of Darchinian versus Kirilov on August 2, 2008, the 15-0 Darrell took on the 17-0 super middleweight prospect Mike Paschal. Both were considered top prospects and future challengers to the super middleweight title, so someone's always got to go. Will Parchel stop a bronze medalist, or will Darrell improve to 16 and 0? Let's find out. At this time, we present a battle of the undefeated super middleweights in the ring. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside. From Bellevue, Washington, Barry Druxman. From Kent, Washington, Glenn Hamada. And from Tacoma, Washington, Tom McDonough. Introducing at this time our third man in the ring, our referee in charge. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Bobby Howard. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled. Ted Rounder. A super middleweight special attraction. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing pink trunks with black trim, hailing from Baltimore, Maryland. He weighed in at ring 17 and 0 and 1, but he only has four KOs. He doesn't have much power. Campaign in the ring, the record of 17 wins, no losses, and one draw, with four wins coming by way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated Mike, the persecutor. The persecutor. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing green trunks with silver trim. He's the number 14th ranked WBO contender. He weighed in at the super middleweight level. 15 and 0 and 10 KOs. Pounds. He also is undefeated. With a record of 15 wins, no losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked number 14 world contender. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the 2004 Olympic bronze medalist. Introducing the undefeated fighter known as the Matrix. Andre. The Matrix? I thought that was the resurrect. Never mind. Once again, I'm going to be in charge, Bobby Howard, and now we give instructions. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled. Here we go, Andre. I think you both received your instructions, and you know what I expect. I want you to make yourself a gentleman at all times. Okay, shake them up. Get it off. Good luck. And the dexterous Andre Durrell being showcased in control of Durrell's shoulder, but he managed to do it. And that's a little lightning speed. Not a one punch guy, but the power for opponents. You don't see the punches coming, and the punches are plentiful. And up to a shaky start his last fight with hand strikes. He's going to pound and not cool enough. Passed only four KOs in his All right, ding ding, round one. Here we go. <laughs> He's wearing not only not only pink trunks, they're like look like a kimono. So Darrell's gonna start off very slow here. 
aggressive Pascal get in her own face, smother his dark in the room, but that's not normally Ooh, nice combo by uh Pascal. Pascal, sorry. A controlled boxer, as you pointed out. However, he thinks for this fight, he can alter his plan a little bit, but certainly here in round one. He's not rushing Durrell as Anthony Hanscott did in Durrell. Yeah, he's not rushing him, and at the same time, Durrell's not really moving that quick. He's pointed out, but uh, so he doesn't want to get off to a terrible start in this fight. I don't think a conservative round one or two is such a bad idea for him. Durrell fighting a southpaw here at the start, being very patient. He's got a very good jab. Thunder in the left. When he does stand lefty, he feels he has more power as a righty, though. He's and he really doesn't even pay attention to whether his opponent is a, a lefty or a And really the first time of Durrell switching to righty. And uh, see how that works. Well, I'm going to say something Greg Haskell. He's not, you know, on my moment here. Greg Haskell's very focused. He's got himself off to a pretty nice start. And so far, so good for him. So, you know. That could change dramatically, of course, but for right at this moment, he's doing a pretty nice job here in the wrong one. And of course, we have yet to see a barrage of punch out by Andre Durrell, which is really where he shines. You mean that could change when Durrell starts punching? Oh, that's so lightly. <laughs> Durrell gets his power from his speed and leverage. His power, actually, Al, was in question as you were going into the Hansville fight, but there was no doubt about the hand speed. Yeah, he had had a, that fight against Curtis Stevens in the UFC that wasn't so similar. He thinks he's more powerful as a righty, uh, does Durrell. I'm not sure I totally agree with that, but, you know, he would know. Yeah, so Durrell is kind of a switch hitter here. Not as not as effective as Marvin Hagler, but he's still, you know, switching it up both stances here. But n nothing's really going on, though. Yeah, Durrell's just standing there waiting for uh, Pascal to come in, and Pascal's not coming in. that whoever he's fighting, whether it's Hanshaw or Pasco, he has to be pleasing. He has to be entertaining. Final seconds of the opening round schedule for 10. Nice job by Andre Durrell. Let's get the keys to victory for Durrell versus Pasco and All right. Let's get to the next round. Good moment in round one. Ooh, what a shot by Pascal. Ding, ding, round two. Oh, what a shot by Pascal. That drove Durrell right into the ropes. Yeah, see, I think Mike Pascal's fight is exactly the right fight for him. Controlled aggression. Uh, you, you know, the thing about Durrell is when you rush him, if you are a fighter that does Yeah, but they're not throwing any punches. But if that's not your stock to trade, you might end up walking into one of those powerful straight rights and straight lefts by Durrell. And Andre Durrell is one of those fighters, Steve, that if you don't pressure him, he sometimes is having to keep a slower pace. Yeah, he, the moments that Hanshaw was pressuring him turned out to be eventually the good moments for Andre Durrell. And, and here Pascal is biting Durrell in, so... Uh, yeah. He goes to the... He gets Hands, he will X-Factor. 
Now, Rob, too, has been the X Factor. It's, it's gotten Darrell uh, very much back in his fight, and he's got a nice second round. And then uh, Darrell pushes Pascal back momentarily with Pascal at the game. And he has now demonstrated that he's not scared of anyone. You know, Darrell's a, a monster in the game compared to him. But Pascal says, hey, I'm out of front when I, I want to step up. Single Tough body shot by Darrell. Now Darrell's just waiting for him to make a mistake. Now this is a rookie individual, Mike Pascal, from the streets. When he's been stabbed and shot in street fights for years gone by, he turned to boxing. Very popular in the Baltimore area. So, thank you to the Kings with the, the 2008 Olympic bronze medal. Ding, ding, in the round two. Yeah, Andre Durrell is a grandfather. Leon Lawson Durrell never really knew his, his father, brothers by his grandfather. As a tattoo of his grandfather's face. So Darrell was raised by his grandfather. He never really knew his real father. To Lawson to uh, honor his grandfather. He and his brother uh, said that, uh, you know, their grandfather was always on their back when they were kids. He said, we just don't want to make it official. They both have tattoos on their back. Well, actually, put them on their back. Yeah. Like, on their back in a good way, so we keep them... Oh, Darrell with a nice crisp jab. Slash trainer Leon Lawson. Andre's brother Anthony was an undefeated Super Bowl prospect. Unfortunately, diagnosed with Mom Hodgkin's lymphoma in December 06. And So Anthony Darrell, his brother was 15 and 0 when he was diagnosed with cancer. That sucks. You know, while I suggested that Pascal needs to fight kind of a tactical fight, he's being a little too passive right now. You yeah, he's, he's, he's yeah, he's not really doing much. Or else is standing there and punching like every ten seconds or so, but you know that guy's not doing anything. Yeah, the whole point of stick and move is to stick. Yeah, Darrell was, he was a damn good amateur. He, he basically had all the momentum going in the Olympics, and he ran right into Triple G in the semifinals. You know, no shame in losing to him. Oh, Pascal just hurt Darrell with a big right hand. And Darrell wisely clinched to get his bearings. Five seconds left in the round. Ding, ding, end of the round. All right, ding, ding. Round four, fight. Yeah, another clash of heads. 
And I'm not saying that Frank's not dangerous, but I think as you get through a fight like this, and there's a lot of action in this fight right now. If you get through a fight like this, Steve, I think it makes you a better fighter if you're Andre Durrell. Because Mike Caskill brings a lot of interesting nuances, if you will, to the ring. We've seen a couple of them already. He is out of it. Yeah, now he's annoyed with Durrell. He feels like Durrell is initiating the head to clash of heads. Mission accomplished as far as Pascal's concerned. He is now officially accepted. And he, uh, he told us that uh, he usually gets up the punching when he gets back. Well, Andre Durrell doesn't like to fight on this side, so he holds him there. And he holds him there, and that's his way of getting done, getting over the inside fighting, so he can get it out and do what he does best. Oh, oh big left hand by Durrell, and down goes Pascal. Oh my god, he just busted his nose completely. Oh my god, he broke it. He broke it completely. His blood everywhere. One left hand. No, he wants to fight. He's okay. It's just He just busted his nose completely. Just, no, just tip him off. Let's go. You fight. Well, there's no teeth missing. He broke his fucking nose. It happens. He's like, don't stop it. Don't stop it. Oh, it's not his nose. It, it's like a huge cut above his nose. He's done. Yeah, he's done. He's done, yeah. It, no, he didn't break his nose. It's a huge gash. Like, cut right here. And it's bleeding profusely. Yeah, that, that was going to get worse. No, and Darrell's like, I know, I know, it sucks. Pascal can still go. So he wants a. So here it is. Watch this. One right hand. Bang! And literally just opened up a gash this big. And he's bleeding all over the place. And the, we thought it was a broken nose, but then we look close and it's like a full gash. Here it is right here. Right here. Bang! Oh! It looks like it landed on the jaw. I'm not sure why they created that. But he wanted to go, you know. But I can understand see why, because he, he was definitely that cut was going to get worse and worse and worse. Oh, there's Anthony Durrell. <laughs> yeah, he he wanted the rematch. All right, let's cut that here. Okay, it was an impressive win, I guess, by Durrell to knock Pascal, you know, into, you know, to the state he was in with a gash like this long. Oh, well. He proved who the top prospect was, sort of. Unfortunately, down the road, Durrell lost his world title shot in heartbreaking fashion on a split decision to call Frock. Well, Durrell was one of those good but not great fighters that didn't win the big one. Still, after everyone else had failed to win a medal before him, he was able to salvage a bronze for the Americans. So that's good for something. And so, at least they wouldn't get shut out. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this edition of Fight Night. I'll see you next time.